Sure. Uh, my name is Mark Fernald. I am the treasurer of the Granite State Fairfax Coalition, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak to all of you tonight. Uh, behind me is our resolution, which has been on the ballot in many places around the state on this issue of whether it's time for tax reform in New Hampshire. And it starts out by saying that we believe in a New Hampshire that's fair. And although I um, took a lot of economics courses, I was a major in history. And so I want to talk history for a minute if we're going to talk about fairness. Because our predecessors in New Hampshire thought about this a lot. Uh, if we take ourselves back 240 years at the time of the revolution, uh, two important points come to mind. The first is, before the revolution, the people who lived in New Hampshire were the colony of New Hampshire. They were part of the British Empire. The British Empire had a king and parliament that was far away. There was no constitution, and there's still no constitution in the UK, which I really can't fathom. But at any rate, they had no constitution, which meant they really didn't have any rules. And parliament and the king seemed to do whatever they felt like. And of course, there was no opportunity for the people in New Hampshire to tell the king really what they felt like should be done. Uh, and then if you jump forward to when the revolution happens and the war is won, well, then the people in New Hampshire are faced with, and actually they started thinking about this in 1776 when basically they said, we're independent and we're not paying any attention to what they say in London anymore. So they started thinking at that point and drafted the first constitution. They said, we need some rules. And therefore, we need to think about how are we going to govern ourselves? What matters? And so the things they said that mattered were well, personal freedoms, democracy, and fairness. And they wrote them into those, the, that constitution and then the one that we have now from 1784. A few weeks ago, there were people in this state and across the country that had tea parties. And they were trying to somehow connect themselves to the Boston Tea Party in 1773, I think it was, or was it 74? Uh, but at any rate, Although the tea tax was a small tax, it was very important to the colonists and this idea of fairness. Because what had happened was the king and parliament had decided they didn't have enough money. And so they needed to raise more money. They said, we're going to do it with a tax on tea. And again, it wasn't a big tax. But everybody drank tea. And everybody pretty much drank the same amount of tea. I mean, it's not like if you're really rich, you drink ten times as much tea as the person next door. Everybody drank a few cups of tea a day. And it really rankled the colonists to think that with all of the wealth in the empire, rather than taxing the wealth or taxing the, the income, they taxed tea, which meant the peasant drinking tea and the wealthy man drinking tea paid the same amount of tax to support the same government. That made no sense to them. It wasn't fair. And so we've held on to this idea of fairness in taxation for a very long time. We've had the idea, but we haven't practiced it here in New Hampshire. And that's part of what I want to talk about. Hopefully you all got in your seat this brochure that the co coalition prepared. And if you open it up into the middle, you'll have a graphical representation of these columns. And most of the columns, maybe you saw them when you came in, but there are, also, there are a bunch of little columns in here for the little taxes in New Hampshire. And this big thing that looks like it's holding up the ceiling is actually the property tax column. And on the, the chart you have here, it's horizontal. And that big blue bar across the top is not the border of the page. That's the property tax. And look at how it compares to all the other taxes we have. It's five times the size of the business taxes in New Hampshire. And, and therefore, many times more than all these other taxes. About two-thirds of all the taxes we raise in New Hampshire, state and local, are property taxes. We rely on the property tax more than any other state, and we saw that in uh, one of the slides a few minutes ago. And we have the second highest property taxes in the nation. Uh, generally, it seems that New Jersey takes first place, but we're in second. Uh, the professor talked about this uh, question about whether the property tax is regressive. Well, the chart on the bottom left shows that the tax structure in New Hampshire as a whole is regressive. And since most of our taxes are property taxes, I think it's pretty clear the property tax is regressive. It means that the people with the lower incomes 
pay a much higher percentage of income in tax than the people with the highest incomes. It's almost a four to one ratio between the bottom 20% and the top 1%. The bottom 20% being the people who make less than 20,000 a year, the top 1% people almost a half a million dollars a year. Uh, these figures are from, um, actually from 2000, but not much has changed in how we tax in New Hampshire. Uh, but one thing that has changed is the property tax keeps going up. If you go to the bottom right corner, we've got some history about the total property tax collected in New Hampshire. And what you can see is that it's been going up by more than 7% per year, year after year in New Hampshire. And this stops in 2005. We haven't reprinted this, but I've looked at the data, and it's continued 2006, 2007, 2008 at pretty much the same pace. A little slower increase or smaller increase in 2008, but we're still averaging about 7% per year now over a whole decade. Most of you are not seeing your incomes go up 7% a year, I would guess, and yet your taxes are going up 5, 6, 7, maybe 10% a year, depending on the year. That's the reality of the property tax in New Hampshire. And so what we believe is that we need a different system. There's one other thing I want to bring to your attention from this um, handout, and that's sort of the top right where it says the elderly are getting a raw deal. <coughs> There's a publication called Kiplinger's, and it's an investment newsletter. And they decided a few years ago to do a comparison. What if we had a retired couple making $60,000 a year re retirement income, Social Security and pension, and some investment income? And let's figure out what they would pay in tax property tax, sales tax, income tax, in all 50 states. Now, if you talk to people in New Hampshire, and you say, oh, the property tax is so awful, they'll say, yeah, but look at those other states. They have all those taxes. They pay income tax, they pay sales tax. We don't want that. I'd take my New Hampshire property tax anytime. Well, Kiplinger's did this comparison, and they found that for this prototype retired couple at 60000 a year, New Hampshire had the sixth highest taxes in the nation. I ran some new numbers myself because 60000 a year is on the high side for a retired couple. I said, what if it's a $40,000 a year retired couple living in an average house? Then we were number one. We were by far the highest taxes in the nation. That's the reality of how we tax in New Hampshire. Uh, I'm not trying to play it up to the audience here who appears to be uh, shall we say, my age or older for the most part, but we stick it to the elderly in New Hampshire, and we give the millionaires a break. That's how we tax in New Hampshire. And we think that is wrong at the coalition. We think it's time to change it. And we think the way to do that is to get this information to people. We have a website, nhfairtax.org, where you will find this information. We are working on uh, what we call a statement of fairness that is going to talk, it's going to be short and sweet, but it's going to um, incorporate some of this basic information so that we can send it to people by email, and then you can send it to everybody you know, <coughs> saying, you think New Hampshire is great on taxes? Look at this information. Uh, because the truth is, it isn't. And one thing we're working on now is to take the Kiplinger approach and instead do a comparison of a working family, a middle-aged family with a couple kids and living in an average house or something to that effect, and comparing their tax burden to, uh, in New Hampshire to what they would pay in other states. And you may be told over and over again that New Hampshire has the second lowest taxes in the nation. Well, on average, we do. But the averages hide the extremes. And in fact, the averages hide what's happening to the average person. Because if you take an average or a median income family in New Hampshire in a median priced house and figure out what they're paying in property tax, it exceeds what the same family would probably pay in income tax, property tax, and sales tax in many other states. So I, I can I can give I can give you and everyone a you know a personal um, example of that. Um, I moved to Hampton from Massachusetts about twelve years ago. Uh, I was working in Massachusetts, continued to work in Massachusetts, and um, my, my combined income tax and property tax in, in Massachusetts 
was equal to my property taxes in New Hampshire. And you're still paying income. And I was still paying income taxes in New Hampshire. So my wife loves the beach, so that's the price we pay. But but that was exactly the that was exactly the arithmetic that we were staring at. Um, the property tax was twice what we were paying in Massachusetts, and when you added that to the income tax, you know, we weren't getting any kind of break. So if you're interested in this information and in this uh, future statement of fairness that we hope to have ready within a few weeks, please leave your email address on the clipboard and we will email you when we're ready so that then you can forward this to people you know and we can spread this information, we call it virally, I guess is the term of the day now, that it spreads like a virus throughout people's computer lists and networks so that we can get the information out. Talk about the elderly, but.